Hello there and a very good afternoon. You're watching Lunchtime News on TV1. I'm Amavi Banagoda and let's start off by taking a look at your headlines this afternoon. Nurses call in sick for a second consecutive day. Daily operations at government hospitals hampered. Nurses strike raise questions in parliament. Health minister responds to allegations. Prices of 27 different medical drugs to be reduced. Singer Nadimal Pereira and prison officer Lalit Kumara, who were arrested in Dubai, deported to Sri Lanka. In one of your headline-making stories this afternoon, the trade union action that saw nurses connected to the government service United Nurses Union reporting sick continued for a second day today. The trade union action concerns a number of demands, including the demands to increase the emergency allowance by 10,000 rupees and to see the uniform allowance raised to 25,000. Patients at a number of national hospitals have been inconvenienced as a result. <laughs> I came at my expense from beyond Chilau to collect five reports. There was nobody at the ward and I was asked to leave. I have no medicine. I have to purchase it. What is this? We cannot even collect a report. I got a date to collect a blood report. They gave the 30th as a date of collection. So I came bearing travel expenses and now I must go back. As patients, we must say this is very inconsiderate. I have come all the way from Kamrupit here. I think I have spent about 3,000 over three days. The association said the strike action will not affect operations at the Lady Richway Children's Hospital, the De Soiza Ladies Hospital, the Castle Hospital, the Maharagama Apeksha Hospital or specialist units. Today is day 12 of the debate on the 2019 budget at the committee stage. The budget overheads pertaining to the Ministry of Health, Nutrition and Indigenous Medicine, Ministry of Women and Child Affairs, Dry Zone Development are being de debated today. The strike action launched by the Government Service United Nurses Union was debated in Parliament. Now moving on to some more local news. The JVP today directed a question at the government in parliament regarding the abolishing of the grade 5 scholarship exam and the grade 1 admissions. According to a new circular, three of the points awarded for location of residence has been removed. As a result, those in the vicinity have now no way of attending the school. I would like to know if the government plans to re-award these points in 2020 intake. This is a sensitive subject, so the education minister is duty bound to provide a written response. I would like to know the government's stance on this. The president has stated that he would abolish these exams. Will the government intervene to take this towards abolishment? The topic of the scholarship is one that is being considered. The Minister of Education must be present to provide an accurate answer. The report of the Presidential Commission appointed to probe the destruction being wrecked on the Vilpatu Forest has reached Parliament. The Deputy Speaker made the announcement at the opening session of today's parliamentary proceedings. I wish to announce the copy of the report of the Presidential Commission to probe the resettlement close to the Vilpatu Forest Reserve was addressed to the Speaker on the 26th of March 2019 by the Secretary to the President. The Speaker made the request on the 22nd of March 2019 from the committee appointed to present recommendations on releasing lands in the Manar district which was appointed by the President on the 21st of June 2017. I wish to announce to the House a copy of the report is now available at the Parliament Library for the perusal of the Members of Parliament.
singer Amal Pereira's son Nadim Al Pereira and prison officer Lalit Kumara, who were recently arrested in Dubai together with notorious underworld leader Mark Andre Madush, has been deported from Dubai. Police spokesperson SP Ruan Gunasekara said that the duo arrived at the BIA earlier this morning in a Dubai Airways aircraft. He further stated that the pair were being interrogated by the Criminal Investigation Department and Police Narcotics Bureau. The duo left the island to Dubai on the 3rd of February. One of them was identified to be a 24-year-old Sanju Geet Nadimal Pereira and the other a 50-year-old prison officer Kodagoda Alachige Lalit Kumara. The duo were deported from Dubai yesterday. They arrived on the airplane FZ5477 early this morning. They have been taken in for questioning by the Police Narcotics Bureau and the Criminal Investigation Department of the Bandaranaika International Airport. On a separate note, it is reported that the group, including notorious underworld leader Mark Andre Madush and singer Amal Pereira, will be presented to courts in Dubai tomorrow. They have not been arrested as of now. They have only been taken in for questioning. The future course of action will be decided after questioning the suspects. Now a protest is currently being carried out at the Ambavilla Junction on the Pallabadda Balangutta Main Road. The protesters state that the Ambavilla Uduvella Main Road has not been repaired for more than 30 years. While the 15 km of the 20 km main road has dilapidated completely, it is causing hardships to residents of Ambalavilla, Ranvala, Udu Ranvala, Mahomara and numerous other villages. The 40th anniversary of the Housing Development Authority is set to fall on Monday, the 1st of April. The chairman of the Housing Development Authority, Lakwijaya Sagarapalan Surya, informed the media on activities that will take place to commemorate this milestone. On the 31st of March, we will initiate construction of 150 model villages with representation from all 25 districts. We are to vest 40 more model villages with the public between April and June. Further, we will launch the national housing policy at the event to be held at BMICH on the 2nd of May. A large investment has been made into housing development in the last four years under the Samata Sevena program that began in 2015. We have so far begun work on 1,930 model villages. A fire broke out at the Sundarapola garbage dump in Kurunagala. The fire was contained following the joint efforts of the Kurunagala Municipal Fire Department and the police. Locals state that although the intensity of the fire has decreased, that smoke continues to emanate from the dump. As a precautionary measure, pregnant mothers, children and elderly citizens living within 500 meters of the garbage dump have been removed. <laughs> Locals say that the municipal council is to be blamed for the current situation. <laughs> News first inquired with Mayor Tushara Sanjeeva regarding the matter. He stated that the relevant parties have been notified of the situation and that as of now, 90% of the fire has been contained. Nearly 100 cattle have died in the past two months in the Dehiwata village of Serunwara, Kantale. Milk farmers have complained that even though they have informed the Serunwara veterinary office about this, officials are yet to come and inspect the situation. Meanwhile, although the veterinary office have provided vaccinations, it is the farmers who have to administer them. No relief has been provided. We buy medicine from our own money, but it is not effective. The cows die eventually. Lots of cows have died as of now. No one provides a solution to this crisis. No one has provided relief to this problem. The farmers allege that these vaccinations have surpassed the dates of expiration. When news first inquired into the matter, Dr. P.M. Menaka Tilasinger of the Serunuvara Veterinary Office stated that she has informed her office of the current situation. 